Hi there, I'm Noelle, I'm a cosplayer, and this is my YouTube channel. Fun fact about me, I used to do book blogging, and I used to do book reviews. And I kind of miss doing that, so I thought, why not review anime? So today I'm going to review Demon Slayer, which I decided to dress up in a female cos test of Muzan, the villain. Now obviously, I don't have the right contacts, I don't have the full outfit, which is why it's called a cause test rather than cosplay. But that's not what the video is about today. Today's video is about the anime Demon Slayer. Specifically season one, because at this time I don't think there's a season two, so only season one. And duh, spoilers ahead, so be warned. So to start off, let's talk about the main character, Tanjiro. I was very afraid of what Tanjiro was going to be like. Starting off in the anime, he seemed like that good-hearted, sappy, like, oh, I can't hurt anybody, like, stereotypical shonen anime boy. And I'm gonna be honest, I do not like those characters at all. They are very annoying, I don't relate to them, and it's just like, everything goes perfectly for them, and that's not interesting for me. However, Tanjiro did surprise me. I'm not gonna go as far as to say that I love Tanjiro, but I really do enjoy Tanjiro's character and what they did with him. Something I specifically liked about Tanjiro's character is actually the fact that he has limits. What I really hate the most about a lot of like shonen anime is that the main character is fighting a big baddie and he's like, oh no, I hit my limits. Just kidding, I have no limits, my threshold doesn't exist, and manages to defeat literally every villain ever. I have issues with that because what is the point of growth if you have no limits starting out like season one? Tanjiro has limits. He can't defeat the villain. He needs help. That is gold to me because it shows that Tanjiro is going to have growth. That despite all the growth he's had thus far, he's still not nearly as strong as he could be, which is proven when he meets the Hashira. So I am actually very excited to see what happens to Tanjiro, how he grows. I think that that specifically offers the show so much more opportunity for development than other shonen anime do where they're like, oh, my character has no threshold. They're magically powerful. Like, no. Tanjiro has some awesome development opportunities and I'm here for it. Now, while I did learn to like Tanjiro, Nezuko was another story. And I know I'm probably going to get shit kicked for this, but Nezuko, ugh, I, I'm so annoyed. Not at her, not at her specifically, but at the writers. You took this beautiful, kind-hearted, like, she could have been very independent, very powerful, very strong-willed female character. And then you were like, no, just kidding. The writers literally made her a demon. And then we're like, oh, well, she can fight her demon will and, like, choose her humanity. And then you don't give her the opportunity to choose her humanity. You forced her to see all humans as her family. You freaking screwed with her head so that she's not even getting the choice to fight for her humanity. So which kind of makes all of the scenes later on in the movie where she's like, do I pick fighting the demons or saving my family whom I dearly love? Like, the en her entire character opportunity was missed. I would have loved if they had taken Nezuko and actually shown her struggle and her fight against her demon side for her humanity. That would have been way more interesting than just being like, oh, you look like my brother. Well, yeah, obviously I don't want to eat you. Like, no, I'm sorry. Nezuko was a completely missed opportunity. And then, oof, 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 oof. this is why I don't love Tanjiro though. The way that Tanjiro treats Nezuko is so annoying. He talks down to her, he belittles her, he treats her like an object who can't speak for herself. Also, that's another thing. Why can Nezuko not talk while so many other demons can? If she's this like magical demon who is so different and unique from everybody else, how come she can't talk? That doesn't make any sense to me. Why did you mute this female character who's so strong-willed she didn't become a mindless demon? Excuse me? No. And then you take that strong-willed muted female character and you put Tanjiro as her mouthpiece, her older brother. Like, oh my god, the way Tanjiro is like, she's not gonna make that choice. No, 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 it's okay. I know what's best for her. Like, bruh. She has a mind of her own. Shut up and sit down and let her speak. 
Oh wait, she can't because the writers didn't give her a voice. Anyway, let's talk about some other characters. I really love Muzan. Clearly, I'm, I'm cause testing him today. I love Muzan because he doesn't seem like your stereotypical villain. The brief glimpse that we are given of him in season one is rich. You see this character who looks like he is living among humans trying to pass as them, but is also not afraid to turn somebody into a demon, then has the ability to change his gender whenever he feels like it. Honest to God, Muzan in his female form showed up and was just like, prostrate yourselves. And I was like, yes, yes, you are the baddie that we need. Because I'm sorry, in a lot of anime, the baddie is like some 40 year old dude fighting a 16 year old boy and is like, yeah, this is my evil plan. Oh my God, I've been thwarted. Muzan's like, step aside, bitch. You don't have anything over me. Like he's untouchable. The, the level that he's at is so far beyond Tanjiro at this point that you know there's going to be so much room for character development and plot lines. It's gonna be great. I, I'm so excited for it. Now I'm not gonna talk about every single character because there are a lot of them in the first season, but a couple more that I wanted to point out. First off, Zenitsu. Why? Basically what they did with Zenitsu's character was they took the stereotypical pervy shonen anime character, which needs to die as an archetype and I will die on that hill because that is so annoying and misogynistic and unnecessary. It's not funny. Anyway, that's another video. Zenitsu, they took Zenitsu from the pervy character archetype and molded him into something even more annoying. The whining, the crying, the screaming, like, dude, shut up. If you don't want to be a demon slayer, just say you quit and walk away. Stop screaming to high heaven all the time. And then he goes into his Thundercats ho state and he's like a total badass, but only has one power. And I'm sitting here going, I mean, maybe, maybe there's an opportunity for him and he'll like be a decent character, but the whining, I don't even care anymore. He whines the entire time. His whole purpose is to sit there and whine. I don't want to listen to 90% whining and 10% badass. It's not worth it. The badass is not worth it. Another character that I really want to talk about just briefly is Tomioka. I don't know what the point of his character is supposed to be, but the only vibe I got of this dude was Kakashi from Naruto. He's literally just like, oh yes, I am very brooding and smoldering and oh my god, look at me, I'm so sexy. I'm going to say three words the entire show, but everybody's going to be in love with me. Like, brah, that is not a personality trait, okay? You're not interesting. At least I sure as heck don't think he's interesting, but apparently lots of other people do because I've seen lots of cosplays of him. I don't know what it is. Maybe people like the dark, mysterious character but I guess that's not my type. I like characters that have personality and are interesting, kind of like Shinobu. The first season made her out to be this very nice, very caring character, but there is a glimmer, a little glimmer of this like anger filled past and resentment. And I'm like, you, that's great. I love seeing that. I want to see more of that. I want to see more of the darkness and the resentment. And I want to see that pulled out. And I want to see her struggle with that because that's interesting. Characters that are just one type and stay one type the whole time are not interesting. At least I sure as don't think they are. So I'm really excited to see what they do with Shinobu's character. The rest of the Hashida, I don't know. The rest of them seem pretty 1D. I don't remember all their names. I just remember you got the big tall dude who apparently lasted everything. So yeah, he's the barbarian. You have... The dude who can't remember anything, but like immediately pulls out wind power is like, oh, look at me, I'm a badass. Like, bro, where were you the whole time? You have the girl, the girl who thinks every dude is cute and apparently has no brain cells beyond that, which, oh my God, don't even get me started on that. And then you have the anger management dude. And then there's a couple others in there, but who cares about the rest of them? Oh, wait, no, I forgot pride dude, fire dude. You always gotta have the pride dude in there somewhere. So I think there's seven, I counted seven Hashida. I'm pretty sure there's actually nine. There's two more that I apparently didn't care about. But the rest of them, 
That's not seven. But I don't know. I don't think the rest of them are going to be that interesting. Maybe they will be. I know a lot of people like the other Hashida, so I imagine there's something interesting going on there. But I didn't really see a lot of it in season one. And hopefully season two will offer them more. But at the same time, the show's not really about them, in my opinion. I think the show's going to be about Tanjiro and Nezuko and the other two dudes that hang out with them. And I hope we see more from the Hashida, because I think that there might be some interesting stories there. I'm just going to see how it goes. Overall... I was very pleased with Demon Slayer Season 1. I didn't think I was going to be. I'll be honest. I had to do a double take on it. I originally stopped at, like, episode 3, I think, and was like, this is so boring. I don't want to watch any more of this. But it had so much hype, and I saw all my friends watching it, and I was like, all right, fine. And I so I forced myself past that section, and I will admit, it does get better. So I definitely think it's worth a watch if you're looking for a story that takes stereotypical archetypes in anime and kind of tips them up on their head so they're a little bit more interesting. And I do think that the way season one ended offers a lot of opportunity for interesting plot elements and character developments for season two. So that said, I will definitely be looking out for season two and I'm definitely going to be trying to build a full Muzan cosplay or buy it. I don't know. I don't really know how to dye kimono silk so buying it might be the, the better choice. But now I want to know what do you guys think? Did you enjoy Demon Slayer? Did you not enjoy Demon Slayer? Let me know in the comments below. Also, let me know in the comments, do you guys want me to do more reviews? Did you enjoy this? I don't know. Maybe people don't care about my opinion on these matters. <laughs> Either way, make sure that if you like this video to like and subscribe. And thank you guys for not being normal with me today. I will see you next time.